I first met Benedict Anderson in 1991 when I was part of a University of the Philippines research team on agrarian issues in Central Luzon. Anderson happened to be in town when, when we presented our individual research proposals and he graciously accepted our invitation to sit with us and offer his comments and suggestions. One of the research proposals was to do a history of a small town in Central Luzon, which I will not name. Uh, one of, uh, after the presentation, he astounded us with the information that the town in question was also known as the Chop Chop Capital of Central Luzon, where vehicles car knocked in Manila and other places were routinely being brought to some town facility and disassembled into its parts before being sold elsewhere. None of us knew this, of course. So I guess it takes a Ben Anderson to uncover such a scandalous detail about what was thought to be a perfectly respectable town. That, that personal encounter opened my eyes to the type of scholarship and intellectual work that ben, ben Anderson has come to represent. Even as he looked at the big picture, discoursing on the formation of nations and other macro perspectives, his feet remained firmly on the ground as he was constantly on the lookout for oddities in social life that would provide jump-off clues to the essence and realities of the human condition. He was born on August 26, 1936 in Kunming, China, to an Anglo-Irish father and an English mother. The family descended from the Anderson family of Art Break, Potritney, I hope I pronounced um, right, Scotland, who settled in Ireland in the early 1700s. Ben's father, James Caro O'Gorman Anderson, was an official with the Chinese Maritime Customs, assigned to collect taxes and run after opium dealers. James Anderson was actually born in Penang, now in Malaysia, whose father, Ben's grandfather, that is, was one of the first British colonial officials who built the city's big water reservoir, which still stands today, I'm told, as well as a modern harbor. He also built a nice Irish family house on top of Penang Hill, which still exists. Ben's grandmother, Lady Frances Anderson, was the daughter of a well-known Irish member of parliament, Ben's great-grandfather, Nicholas Purcell O'Gorman, who had been involved with a bloody 1798 Irish uprising <coughs> against England rule. Ben takes his middle names from another ancestor, Richard O'Gorman, who was one of the leaders of the Young Irelander Rebellion of 1848. Part of the 1848 series of revolutions all over Europe that Karl Marx wrote about. His equally distinguished younger brother, Perry Anderson, is a noted historian and a political theorist was editor of the iconic Marxist New Left Review from 1962 to 1982. Anderson was brought up mainly in California and after moving to Ireland, went to Eton College and then to Cambridge University, studying briefly under the famous Marxist historian Eric Hobsbawm and graduating with a first class degree in classics in 1957. He moved to Cornell University in 1958 to pursue a PhD in Indonesian politics, completing it uh, with the, with the book called The Pemuda Revolution Indonesian Politics 1945-46. He taught in the Department of Government at Cornell University until he retired in 2002. Among the Filipino scholars he associated with or mentored at Cornell were Joel Rocamora, Ray Ileto, Vince Rafael, June Aguilar, Georgia Binales, and Carol Howe. He was a great admirer of Jose Rizal, whom he fondly called Lolo Jose and who occupied special places in his writings. He had extended that fondness to other anti-colonial heroes, especially the anarchist socialist Isabel de los Reyes, whose folklore horror classic El Diablo in Filipinas, he, has, he had translated into English and it was launched uh, last year uh, here at the Asian Center. Anderson was of course best known for imagined communities, reflections on the origins and spread of nationalism published in, 18, in 1983 but has since undergone countless editions and has been translated into 34 languages. It is a path-breaking and highly innovative work that has supplied one of the most popular and often quoted concepts in the academic world, popular literature, and even beyond. In it, he systematically describes trying to reconcile Marxist and nationalist theories, the major factors contributing to the emergence of nationalism in the world during the past three centuries. But aside from being an astute scholar, Ben Anderson also belonged to the uncommon breed of committed and socially conscious intellectuals. As a graduate student in Southeast Asia 
studies at Cornell, he incurred the unforgiving ire of the Indonesian dictator Suharto when he co-wrote co and published an interpretation of the September 1965 coup in Jakarta that went, went against the official government line that it was supposedly the handiwork of communists. For this, he was banned from entering the country for close to 30 years or the entire duration of Suharto's rule. Indonesia's loss was the Philippines and Thailand's gain, however, as Anderson shifted his attention to these two countries, resulting in outstanding works such as The Spectre of Comparisons, Violence at State in uh, Western Nationalism and Eastern Nationalism, Under Three Flags, and many others. He was elected a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 94, received the Fukuoka Prize for Contributions to Asian Studies in 2000, and the American Social Science Research Council's Albert Hirschman Prize in 2011. In a reply to a question from Giorgio Ibinales as to what attracted him to the Philippines, Anderson replied, and I quote, I think that living in America and having long experience in the Katarantaduhan of Washington and other places made me think I should really study the American colony. Why did the benighted, backward Spanish colony produce Mabini, Rizal, Luna, De Los Reyes, et al., and the progressive American one produced nothing comparable? Why was the U.S. established political system so lousy and so long-lasting? All the more so in that Indonesia and Thailand seem to be being Filipinized in their politics in the age of American dominion. How could a country with so many gifted, so many nice people end up in such a mess? <laughs> ben Anderson died on December 13, 2015 in Surabaya, Indonesia, at the age of 79. He now belongs to the pantheon of immortals.